Eric, a police detective, was having lunch in a cafe. At some moment, he went to the bathroom and left his smartphone on the table. When he came back, the phone was gone. The detective saw a man leaving the place and ran after him. Eric stopped him when the man was about to sit in a car. The detective told the man to give him his gadget back. But the man seemed confused. I know nothing about your phone. I just gave my friends a lift to work. And he pointed at two men entering an office building. After hearing this, Eric immediately called the police. Why? The man lied. His car was a sports convertible with just two seats. The car wouldn't have fit three men. In the middle of the night, Dennis was woken up by a loud crash. One of the kids must have been out. Ugh! But they know they aren't allowed to leave after curfew. The man went to check on the children. All three of them, Catherine, Ruth, and Larry, seemed to be sleeping peacefully. Look at the kids and try to figure out who sneaked out of the house. It was Ruth. There's a dirty sneaker hidden behind the curtain and several pieces of french fries under her bed. Brenda was traveling by train. It was scorching hot in the carriage. The girl took off her gold bracelet decorated with diamonds and put it on the table in front of her. Several minutes later, the train entered a tunnel and it got pitch dark. When the tunnel was left behind, there was no bracelet on the table. Boy, I'm surprised. Brenda was shocked. Someone's taken my bracelet. There were just three other people in the compartment. Helen said she'd been sleeping. Rachel was reading a book on her phone. And Gregory had gone to the bathroom even before the train entered the tunnel. Who took the bracelet? It was Helen. At first, she had her sleeves rolled up. But now, they covered her arms down to the wrists, hiding the bracelet. Once Daniel found a coin that had a 10 BCE mark on it. The guy realized the thing had to be very old and valuable. Happy and excited, he took it to an expert. But the specialist didn't even agree to examine the coin. He told Daniel right away the thing was fake. How did he figure it out so fast? People who lived before the current era couldn't know there would be another era. That's why they couldn't make such marks on coins. James had a meeting with his university professor. It ran late, and when the guy was leaving the building, it was already dark. As he was walking along the deserted halls, he heard someone shout for help. The voice was coming from behind a locked lecture hall door. James managed to open it and found his groupmate, Mike, inside. In the afternoon, the guy wanted to get a book from the library, but it was closed. He was already leaving when he heard footsteps behind his back. When he came round, he was locked in. James figured out three suspects and interrogated them first thing in the morning. Matthew said he had left the campus right after the lectures. Emily replied she had been studying at the library all day long. Olivia met with her friends and they were having lunch at the university canteen. James realized who was guilty right away. It was Emily. She couldn't study at the library because it was closed that day. Ashley and Mary were walking in the forest when they spotted some barriers. Each picked a different plant to feed on, but one of them didn't make a smart decision. Guess who? It's Ashley. There's an unconscious bird next to the plant, which indicates it's poisonous. The endangered plant seeds can be eaten. Lucy and Jack are both doing work on two different buildings. Lucy is sitting outside on the second floor, trying to clean the window. Jack is climbing down an apartment complex. Which of the two is less clever? (laughs) 
Jack. Even if he's wearing a helmet, the height difference is enough to injure him. Joanna and Sissy are spending the day at home. Joanna is doing her spring cleaning, while Sissy is trying to feed her son. Which of the two should rethink their actions? Sissy. There's no danger if the vacuum cleaner isn't plugged in. But it isn't a good idea to feed babies chunks of chicken with a knife and a fork. Michael is ready to break into a house that has a dog. Karen is putting the jacket on her daughter in the middle of the street. Who is in more danger? Karen and her daughter. They're kneeling and don't see the car approaching, while Michael can spot if there's a dog in the yard or not. Jason went to the water park with his son. Jake is a firefighter and was called to put out a fire. Now, Jason is on the phone while a boy behind him struggles to stay on the surface of the pool. Jake is putting out a fire on a tree. Which of the two isn't bright? Jason. He's on the phone and can't hear the boy behind him. Jake is putting out the fire on the tree to prevent it from spreading to the forest. John's father has three sons. There's Jack, a quiet, intelligent student. Then there's Jason, a popular athlete. So who's the third son? It's John! His father has three sons. Jack, Jason, and him, John. There's a barrel of water in the yard. You look inside and say that it's more than half full. But your friend argues that it's less than half full. How to figure out who's right without using any measuring tools or removing water from the barrel? Tilt the barrel so that the water touches the rim. If you can see the bottom, the barrel's less than half full. If the bottom is still covered with water, it's more. One day, a teacher decided to give her students a test, but all of them refused to take it. She could give detention for skipping the test to only one student. All of them knew each other's names. If a student knew they were going to get detention, they agreed to take the test. How could the teacher make all the students participate? She told them that she'd give detention to the student whose name came first alphabetically. Then this person wouldn't skip the test. The next person on the list wouldn't skip as well. And so on, until the end of the list. Maria was getting ready for her date. Everything had to be perfect. But once she decided to take a shower, she found out the bathroom was occupied. It was probably one of her sisters. The girl decided to pick an outfit not to waste time. Soon, Maria noticed the bathroom was empty. But as soon as she turned the shower on and started washing her hair, she saw the water was red. It was a prank. Someone had added paint to the shower head. Maria questioned her sisters. Rose said, I was in my room studying for a math exam. And Ashley explained, I was in the shower right before you. I even washed my hair and everything was okay. Maria immediately realized who had played a trick on her. Can you? It was Ashley. Look at her. If she was in the shower just minutes before, why is her hair dry and nicely styled? Alan called his friend Milo, a private detective, and asked him to come as soon as possible. When Milo arrived at Alan's office, he saw everything was upside down, with papers all over the place and furniture broken. I entered my office, saw this, and immediately called you. Alan's voice was trembling. I hope they haven't stolen the company money and important documents. Alan rushed to his safe with a key in his hand. It's the only existing key to this safe. He inserted the key in the lock and opened the door. The safe was empty. While Milo was looking around, Alan was thinking aloud, I have this new guy, Robert. I'm almost sure he's a spy sent by my competitors. 
He could break into my safe to steal very important documents. Milo turned to his friend. Why exactly do you want to frame that innocent guy? How did Milo figure it out? There's only one key to the safe and Alan has it. If the employee had broken into the safe, he wouldn't be able to lock it again. You're a student and you have an important philosophy exam today. Big stress. You, like most of your peers, haven't attended many classes or learned anything this semester. When you come to the exam, the teacher puts a chair in the center of the classroom and says, None of you learned my subject, so everyone will have the same chance to pass it. See this chair? Write evidence that it doesn't exist. The person who convinces me of this will pass. Now, setting aside the fact that the teacher sounds just like the spook in the first question, what should you write to ace the exam? The correct answer is… what chair? Mary is stranded on an island in the middle of an enormous deep lake. She can't swim and doesn't have a boat. The nearest town is on the shore 5 miles away from her. All she has is 3 ropes, each of them are 2 feet long. 3 hours later, Mary reaches the town. How did she manage to escape from the island? Well, it's winter, and the lake is frozen. Mary simply crossed the lake on the ice. A new restaurant opened on the roof of a skyscraper. Food critic Jake is there to try the dishes and give his feedback. Suddenly, a bad storm picks up, and Jake hears an announcement. Everyone must evacuate the building ASAP. He runs inside to find three elevators. He must pick one to stay alive. Behind the first, there are dozens of venomous snakes slithering all over the floor. In the second, three angry lions are roaring as they smell him through the doors. The third elevator is filled with water and two hungry sharks. You want to call the building management to find out who the heck put snakes, lions, and sharks in the elevators. But you need to escape first. Which is the best option? You have 7 seconds to decide. It's the third elevator. When the door opens, all the water will pour out along with the sharks, and he can escape. Josh is on his way home when he notices a group of people following him. He sees an open maintenance hole in the pavement and jumps in to hide. But the cover immediately shuts behind him, and he gets trapped. He starts looking for another exit and ends up in a spacious room with three doors. A nearby sign reads, only one of these doors leads to safety. Behind the first, there's a room closing in on itself every 10 seconds. In the second room, there are four tigers that haven't eaten in months. And behind the third door, there's a giant hungry boa constrictor. Hmm, same building management, huh? Your 7 seconds start now. He should pick the second door. Tigers can't go more than a couple of weeks without food. Will was walking on railroad tracks when he saw a train coming right at him at full speed. As soon as he spotted it, he ran toward the train to survive. Why did he do that? He was in a tunnel. The only way to get to safety was running toward the train out of the tunnel and then jumping out to the side. The takeaway here? Don't be walking on train tracks at all. A prestigious gallery just had a new exhibition. At the end of the show, the gallery owner discovered that four of the most expensive flower paintings had been stolen. The police show up to do an investigation, and now they have, wait for it, three suspects. Jenna, the artist, said she disappeared into one of the studios to paint. Bob, the security guard, said he was just waiting outside and had no idea the flower paintings were gone. Louis, the caterer, said he knew nothing about the robbery until the police showed up. So, who's the thief?
It's the security guard. He couldn't have known which paintings were stolen if he was standing outside. Oh, Bob. Amy won $20 million in the lottery. Ooh. The night after she had received the money, she stayed in the most expensive hotel and made a video. It was about her life and how she hadn't seen her sister since childhood. The next day, three girls showed up claiming to be her sister. All of them look so much alike, but which one tells the truth? It's the lady on the right. She has the same mole as Amy on her cheek, a tattoo with the letter A, and a tattoo with two girls holding hands. A businessman was about to go through a security check at the airport when he realized someone had taken his luggage. The airport police had three suspects who had to be interviewed. Lisa said, I wouldn't take someone's old brown bag. I have my own. Mike explained he was a light traveler and didn't have luggage. He put everything in his backpack. Rob had a broken arm and a sprained ankle. He could hardly carry anything. The police immediately knew who had done it. Can you figure it out? It was Lisa. Nobody told her the luggage was brown. 